Ladies and gentlemen, monsters and maniacs, my name is the Pumpkin Queen, and I should have made this video a lot sooner. If you are one of the first people to watch this video, you are probably a friend or a family member who I send this to. Take that as a compliment. If this is on public mode, you are probably one of my followers. Hi! <laughs> or you are new to my channel. I am so sorry that this is the first video you watch from me. And you're interested or want to know more about maladaptive daydreaming. Well, you came to the right place. Because that is what this update video will be about. And the fact it currently has on my channel. So, without further ado, I will tell you about my disorder. So. What defines maladaptive daydreaming? MD, for short, is a disordered form of immersive daydreaming. Often the person who does so spends about 56% of their awake hours in these dreams. These are usually fictional universes that our community calls paracosms. Some are from movies, anime, books, etc. But some are created by the person themselves. These paracosms are very detailed and have very complex stories and characters. Some people use para as a word to describe these characters. The main character, or yourself, is referred to as a parami. My personal universes that are featured as stories on this channel are Dream Reapers, a science fiction universe, and Heartbreaker, which is a horror uh, story. Basically, your uh, typical final girl type of uh, story. And there are a few more that still have not been put down on paper, like Till Death Do Us Apart, which is a romance horror universe, and Shattered, which is more of a slice of life uh, type of story. Not all daydreams take place in these paracosms. They can be about the real world as well, featuring romance, celebrity interviews, negative feelings, or even imaginary companions. And that last one is one I'm guilty of a lot. <laughs> Which is why the next subject is habits of a maladaptive daydreamer. I uh, tend to talk to myself when I think that I'm alone. And it's not like how you talk to your cat or dog, or swear when you stub your toe. No, no, no. Full-on conversations with a person that is not there. And the worst thing is when you're caught. <laughs> uh, and I have been many times. And this started for me when I was a kid. So, uh, yeah. Other things would be pacing or rocking. This is something I personally don't do, but I know a lot of others I've spoken with do. Some enjoy pacing around the room or daydreaming, and this could be to make the scenario that plays more realistic, and others rather like rocking back and forth. Movement is not uncommon at all during maladaptive daydreaming, some even move around with their hands, mouth, words, and mimic the emotions of their paras or paramis. So that being said, some of Maladap's daydreaming can suddenly burst into laughter at one point, and moments later start crying. Maybe because their parami is crying, or maybe, and this is one I can relate to, it is a character that died. And they had to go in order to continue the story. And that brings us to why it is maladaptive and not fun to have. A fictional character that dies is not as bad as imagining a real person dying. But why do it? In all honesty, I don't know. Why only do it once? Why your brain puts a daydream on repeat and gives you all the different scenarios? on how your best friend might die in a car accident. 
Try doing that for two hours. It has a big impact on your grades and work. A lot of people who have MD have concentration issues, which make it hard to keep up the good work at school or the job. Not only that, it can have a big effect on your sleep schedule as well. Speaking from experience. Maladaptive daydreamers go to sleep and wake up in a daydream. And without a bedtime story, it becomes difficult to sleep. The problem that I'm currently facing is that I wake up in the middle of the night and my body refuses to go back to sleep, resulting in a daydream of multiple hours until the alarm goes off. And for those who follow me for a longer time, probably have heard in my voice that I am so tired. I haven't had a good night of sleep in a month. And that is why it broke to me Friday how much of a problem it is getting to me, since I came home crying due to the lack of sleep. So, what triggers maladaptive daydreaming? For most, it can be multiple things. Media is a big influence, since this is where most inspiration comes from for our paracosms. Games, anime, books, you name it. I can read a few pages of a book, and before I finish it, I zone out. Which is why audiobooks and narrating helps to concentrate for me. Music is also a big one, since this can be the soundtrack to my daydreams. It can give inspiration, and other times it's just fun to imagine an anime outro or intro on said song. And those are just a few things. Others can be staring out of the window or laying on your back, which to me still don't make sense, but are very present. Can you be diagnosed for maladaptive daydreaming? No. Not yet. Not currently. Technically, it is seen as neither a disorder nor mental illness. Yet. But it definitely has characteristics of behavioral addiction. The only behavioral addiction listed in the DSM-5, currently, is gambling addiction. But since it relies on your own mental ability, it also makes it similar to obsessions. This is why some think it comes close to the OCD spectrum. And you will hear others who think that MD could be a symptom of ADHD. This, however, is not the case. OCD and MD are separate entities, but with a lot of co-occurrences and shared mechanisms. This is something I asked to a doctor who is currently researching maladaptive daydreaming. You can pause the video to read it for yourself. A coping mechanism would definitely suit on the other hand. So, as a final statement to this, even though we know that everything we daydream is not real, it is an escape from the real world, to the point where it becomes addictive. However, it can cause a lot of distress, since a lot of time is spent inside of them, and not in the real world. Which is why it is maladaptive. I hope you understand the phenomenon that is maladaptive daydreaming more, and why I do certain things. And I also hope that your view on me with this won't change, and that you, my friends, family, and fellow members of the horror community will accept this part of me. So, you might ask, how will this affect your channel? That is easy. I'm taking a break. After having a crying session on Friday, I think it is smart to have less interactions with stories and focus on getting my sleep back. I don't know for how long this will last. No. Will I be completely gone? No. I'm going to finish up long stories that have been sitting there since MD made me lose all motivation for them. I'm going to finish what I started, 
but I need help and voices. So to all the other narrators listening, I need you for a couple of lines for me, if possible. Also, I'm going to write out my current paracosms on paper. Maybe if the stories are finished, I can close their books and move on from them. I want my life back. Not a fantasy one in a Barbie dream house. A simple one with a friends and family. Thank you for listening. My name is Pumpkin Queen, and I'm a member of the Maladaptive Daydreaming community. If any of this sounded familiar, and you think that you also have MD, come and check out the Discord group for support. Have a nice evening, my dear Pumplets.